File Manager is a cPanel feature that allows you to manage the files and folders in your hosting account. And that's what we are going to look at in this video, how to use the file manager. So here I have logged into my cPanel. Then go to the file section. There we can find a link to open the file manager. First let's have an understanding about the layout. On the left side you can see the directory tree along with the current directory highlighted in bold text. As you can see currently we are inside the home directory of the hosting account user. And on the right side within the main area you can see the files and folders within the currently selected directory. Just above that you can see a row of buttons to navigate the folders. And above that you can find some action buttons that allow you to do several things such as creating or deleting files and folders, uploading or downloading files, editing, renaming and so on. And at the very top you can find the search box and the settings section. Let me open the settings dialog. It has a few options. First it allows you to set what directory you want to open when you open the file manager. Currently it is set to the home directory. Or you can even set it to the document root for an add-on domain if you have multiple sites or the public HTML directory that's where you put the website files of the primary domain. Let me set it back to home directory and now comes the show hidden files option. Hidden files in Linux have a dot at the beginning of their file names. ST access file is an example. If I uncheck this box and save it, all the hidden files will be hidden. Let me check it back, save and then we can view all the files. Next let's have a quick look at the important directories inside our home directory. .ssh is where you can find the ssh private keys and public keys if you have generated them. To go back you can click either the up one level button or the back button. Let me click the back button and it took me back to the home directory. Similarly, the SSL directory is where you can find your SSL certificates and primary keys. Files are organized into multiple subdirectories within the SSL directory such as certs, CSRs and keys. Then comes the public HTML directory which is the root folder for the primary domain of your cPanel account. Coming to the very bottom you can find a folder called www which is a symbolic link to public html. So here is my primary domain for this cPanel account. The website files for the primary domain are added to the public html directory and when we do that the same files appear inside www as well. That's how a symbolic link works in Linux. If you have more than one site hosted on the same account as add-on domains or subdomains then they also appear here as separate directories. This is an example, apnavar.com, which I set as an add-on domain in cPanel. Going to the add-on domain section, we can find the same domain listed as an add-on domain. So this is where we put the website files for that add-on domain. As you can see, currently this directory contains nothing other than a few default folders. There is no index file, so if you open the site in a new tab, we should see a for not for not found error. To change that we want to create an index.html file. So click the plus file button, then name the file as index.html, click create new file. Now we can see the index.html, select it and click the edit button which opens the dialog box where we can set the character encoding. Click edit which opens the code editor. Now we can add some html, html, head title, set it to something like my website, then comes the body tag, inside that let me add a heading tag, welcome to my website. Ok, now click save changes, the file should be saved. Currently the size is shown as 0 bytes, reload it and the size is now 134 bytes. So it is saved. Once you are finished editing, click the close button to close the editor. 
then reload the web page and we can see the heading tag I entered inside HTML tag. To create a new folder, click the plus folder button. Then let me add a new folder called pictures. Click create new folder and we can see the pictures folder. Now suppose I want to upload a few images into the pictures folder. So open the folder, click the upload button at the top. Optionally check the overwrite existing files option and then select the file from your computer. Here is the image I want to upload. Select it and you can see the upload progress. That file is now successfully uploaded. Let's upload one more image. Select the file and that's also uploaded. If you want to upload more than one file at a time, then you can use the drag and drop feature. You can see that I uploaded the image kerala.jpg twice, but since I had enabled the overwrite option, it won't be duplicated. Now if we check back in the file manager, you can see the uploaded files inside the pictures folder. The images can also be viewed publicly if we enter the address in the address bar. Not just uploading, file manager allows you to download files as well. Just select the file you want to download then click download. Alternatively you can right click and download also. Here is the file I downloaded. cPanel also allows you to move the files and folders to another location. Select the file you want to move, click the move button, then enter the path. Here I want to move it to the root folder. Then click move. Now if we go to the root folder, we can see the file there. To delete a file, select the file. Click delete which opens a dialog where you can skip the trash and delete permanently before confirming. We can see the deleted file in the trash folder. Similar to moving, you can also copy a file or folder which retains it in the original location. Here I am copying the entire pictures folder to another folder called images. Now both the folders have the same content. To select multiple items, hold down the control key while clicking the items. Similarly, hold down the shift key to select consecutive items. Now another feature that's rarely used on shared hosting Linux servers is the permissions feature. Select a file that you want to modify the permissions for, then open the permissions dialog. Here you can see that a file has three access levels, the user that is the owner of the file, group and the other users and each of them can have read write and execute permissions here for the index.html file the owner user has the maximum permissions both read and write while the group has only read permissions and the rest of the users also have read permissions suppose i want to have only read permissions over this file then uncheck write and you can see that the permission number is now 4 that is read permission equals number 4. Read and write is 6 and read write and execute is 7. That's how it works. This is applicable only on VPS and dedicated servers with multiple users. So I am clicking cancel to go back to the file manager. Next let's discuss how you can upload a zip file and extract it. You may want to do this when you want to install WordPress or other such software that comes in zip files. So. For now, let me select all the files, then move them to the trash folder. Click delete. Now all the files are in the trash folder and if I want, I can select all of them and restore again. Here you can find a file called dot trash restore, which contains the original file paths for each of the deleted files. If we view it, you can see the original locations. Okay, that's not what we want to discuss. We want to see how you can upload and extract a zip file. So let me go back to the root folder and currently the directory is empty. Now I'm going to click the upload button. 
and select a zip file from my computer. Select file and inside the downloads folder I had WordPress downloaded. So I am going to select that. Now the zip file is being uploaded. Ok the upload is now complete. Let me go back to the file manager. Then reload the directory and we can see the zip file. Right click it and then click extract. Then it prompts us to enter the location to which we want to extract the files. So here I want to extract it to the root folder. So I am entering nothing here. Just the domain name and then click extract. The files are now being extracted. You can see the progress here. It's complete so click close. And here is the extracted folder. All the files are now inside this folder called WordPress. Now we want to move all of them to the root folder. So again select all the files inside this folder then click move enter the root location click move go back and now all the files are in the root location now we want to delete this empty folder ok now if we refresh the site we should get the WordPress installation page. Ok, now you should have a basic understanding about how to use the file manager. I hope you learned at least something useful from this video. Thanks for watching.